We are live on YouTube. So let's see what's going on. Good afternoon. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Interbeauty TV. Can you hear me? Drop a one in the chat <laughs> if you can hear me. You should be able to hear me. The audio should be good. I'm on my good mic. All right, we in business. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so very much. I appreciate each and every one of you lovely ladies for being patient with me. Welcome to the world of, of live streaming. <laughs> it doesn't go smooth all the time. I had to ditch my IG crowd, so hopefully they can come and find me. The link is in my story, so hopefully they can come and find me. I wanted to simultaneously go live because I haven't gone live on IG this year. And I wanted to say hi to everybody, but that's not going to happen today <laughs> unless I try to fire up later tonight or something. But hey, what's up? Hi, how's everybody doing? Happy New Year. Welcome to Inner Beauty TV. I'm your host, Nicole Michelle, founder and femininity mentor for the Inner Beauty Movement. We're all about helping women reconnect with their feminine power, essence, core, everything that makes them all juicy and magnificent while simplifying the pathway to marriage. So if this sounds like your crew, your tribe, your circle, definitely give us a follow, a like, and subscribe. You hear that rain? Isn't it so relaxing? It's raining here in Dayton, Ohio, and it is just so relaxing, and I'm talking to you all. So hopefully I don't doze off to sleep. Happy New Year to everybody. We're going in hard already this year, talking about loving a man deeply. A few things I want to get out of the uh out of the way some housekeeping welcome to everybody that has is, uh, found my channel for the very first time those of you tuning in found me again lost me but found me again welcome back i appreciate each and every one of you i pay attention to my analytics i pay attention to who likes who subscribes who shares who comments i love each and every one of you thank you thank you thank you thank you and if you have a channel or something i would love to come support you if you have social media platform i would love to come uh, support you show you some love send you some cash app or something to show you some love because 2024 is the year of showing love i know people have said this is a year of exposure i say it's a year of prosperity and a year of putting people on how about that? And so if you have something going on, let me reach out to you and reach out to you, up to you, over to you and show some love. And thank you so much for showing me love. I appreciate that. Oh, somebody says Chicago has snow mixed with rain. Come on, talk to me, everybody. So if you're listening to this, I would love to be your Naomi and guide you like Naomi guided Ruth. That's what I would love to do. Uh, I'm a proud Christian woman. I am a, a believer in Jesus Christ. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I do believe in faith, family, and femininity. That are that uh, these are the three pillars of the inner beauty movement, and that's what we stand on. So, welcome to the channel. Like, subscribe, and share. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And to those of you who are single, married, in a relationship, trying to figure it out, don't know what it is, still dating, having fun, married, been just got married, been married for 20, 30 years. This message is for everybody. This message is a refresher course for every woman who's dealing with a man. OK, <laughs> and we're going to unlock some secrets, but I don't really think that they're secrets, but I'm going to add a little sauce on top. You know how I do. But there are some things that we do need to discuss about loving men, because personally, as a content creator, I do listen to other platforms and I do listen to other messages. And there are some lovely messages on how to gain a man's commitment, his love, uh, you know, attract the provider, how to find a man, get a man to commit. All of these things are wonderful conversations and needed conversations. We need every single piece of that. I think there's not enough conversations about how to really get in deep and snatch a man's soul and love him deeply. When you love a man deeply, this man is almost suicidal when you all break up. This man cannot function when you're not around. Have you ever had a man that in love with you to where it's just like, you know, he's like crying. He's like in love with you, banging the wall, you know, fighting the air when you all argue like can't you get it like he is just so emotionally involved with you that's when you know you snatched his soul that's when you know he loves you and he's invested now um there are some instances where people do this all the time but no no men don't just do this with any and every woman i can assure you there are 
very few opportunities in this lifetime that men find that one woman that completely snatches his soul. Oh, that rain is so relaxing, y'all. If you all in Ohio, man, it was just, oh, this is relaxing. Y'all be careful driving home from work. <laughs> but listen, when you know how to snatch a man, so you don't have to worry about where is this relationship going? Is he going to ask me to marry him? Shout out to Ivana. She got married last year. Um, after coming through my program, she was relaxed and confident. And she knew the ring was coming because I taught her how to just be just relaxed and go with the flow and just show him who you really are. Just show who you magnificent, good girl, you're beautiful. Show him who you really are. Show up in the relationship as your best self. And you don't have to ask these crazy, insecure questions. Where is this relationship going? Are you going to marry me? What are your intentions? And the list goes on. You can show up very confident as your best self. And that is where I want every woman's position to be. So confident in that you know that man loves you and you know he loves you. You love him, Right. But how do you really love a man on a deeper level? That's the question. I want to cover a couple of things because as I was telling the clubhouse ladies, this conversation is going to be triggering to some women simply because of your experiences with men so far. Um, it could be your father. It could be, you know, an ex-boyfriend. It could be someone, a situation that's has happened to you. This could be very triggering to you. And... At some point, you feel like, why does so much centering need to be around loving a man? Why can't it be about loving a woman? Well, because we're feminine. And femininity is all about relationships. We are the ones, our wheelhouse as women, as feminine beings, is fostering bonds, strengthening bonds, building relationships with not just men, people, our children. Why do you think we house the eggs? We are the um we have the wombs we nurse the fetus to uh birth we give birth we give life why because we were built we are biologically wired to handle several things at several times we can multitask we can handle two or three different children's personalities at the same time while juggling our husbands cooking a dinner on the phone all of that we can still do it now, will we have data, data overload? Well, sometimes we have to sit down and go, whoo, I need a break. Absolutely. But we're built to do it at times. We are the only humans that can really do that effectively. It's women. We're built to do that. And we shouldn't do it that much because that's that wears us out. But we're built to do it. We're built to handle several personalities at a time. At a time. Why is that? Because we have to build a relationship with this child, A, this child B, this child C, cousin Boo Boo, and um, you know, Auntie Lily, and <laughs> you know, Grandma Amy, and Uncle. But we have to juggle all of these personalities, and then we have to get along at work, and then we have to get along with our neighbors and the community. And we are just not this these independent beings where we don't know as feminine women. And my signal is really, really weak, so. Let's cross our fingers here. Um, okay, so as women, we have to nurture those bonds. We're nurturers by nature. We nurture a young baby when it's born, right? And a young infant is dependent on us for food a lot of times, right? And so that's important for us to realize and understand and accept that, that that's the way it is. Men, their responsibility for analyzing, protecting, providing, analyzing data, right? Giving answers, providing answers, protection, closure, cover, and all of those things. They're linear thinkers and we can be all over the board because we have so many personalities that we have to nurture. That's why we can be fluid. That's why we can be all over the place. It doesn't mean that our emotions need to be out of whack and un unhinged and that excuses bad behavior. It just simply means that we can house several different data, lanes of data per person, right? Men can do that up until a certain point. That's why they need wives and that's why they need mothers. And that's why they need feminine, feminine, femininity, excuse me, femininity in their life. And so at some point, once he reaches manhood, mom can only nurture him so far. He needs his counterpart, which God has made his help me, which is his wife. Every man 
Nick is a wife. They will try to convince themselves that they don't. And you will see how they, the difference between a man who accepts femininity and one that rejects it. The only uh, femininity that he accepts is sexual. His energy and his how he shows up in the world will be vastly different than a man who accepts femininity outside of just sex. You will see their energies completely different. And one who accepts femininity, accepts the influence of good femininity. You're going to see how he shows up in the world and how he is such a more well-rounded and accepted individual and how it's easy for women to accept him than the other one. Now, this conversation is very important because a lot of content is geared towards performative femininity, right? Do this to get that. Do this, you know, um, you know, stroke them this way and say it that way. And I've taught that that those are good things to have, but those are good things to have in addition to knowing how to love him, though. If you don't know how to love a man, he knows that you're trying to manipulate him. And so it kind of falls on deaf ear. And this is why once he has his feel of you, he will be done. Men are not stupid. They know when you're trying to manipulate him. It's only when you love him deeply and you've established that you can snatch his soul, you've snatched his soul, you understand him, love him, and do everything that I'm going to talk about in this video. That's when you can do all of those other little seductive little things that we do to kind of get our way. But without establishing a, a rapport with him on a deeper level, this looks like flat out manipulation, right? And I've seen some sort of selfish manipulation. Go ahead and get his money. Men are going to dog you anyway. They're going to cheat. Go ahead and get his money. I've heard that. I've heard that time and time again. We've all heard it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that, that conversation has kind of literally taken over social media. Every platform I go to, there's this undercurrent of what can I get from a man? Do this to get this from a man. Do this to get that from a man. And do say it this way and do it this way. And this is how you speak. And this is feminine language. And this is how you, and it's all to get something from a man. You don't think men know that? Put a one in the chat if you don't think men know that. If this is new to you, that men knew this already. That they know that you're trying to trick them into doing something for them. Men are not stupid. Where are my glasses? Right? So they know that you're trying to extract things from them. Here's the thing that you don't understand about men. When you make it about them, they make everything about you. And they don't mind giving you things. That's the beautiful part of masculine men that they don't mind giving you things. They just don't like feeling like suckers. I've said this over and over and over again. And a lot of people's definition of love equates to what can you give me? And that's a selfish kind of love. And a lot of men are like that too, to be honest. They're like that too. Hey, if I buy you a steak, you need to sleep with me. I mean, they're very, very transactional. And those people, because of their level of or lack of vulnerability, will never experience true love and they will always be jaded. They will always have their walls up and they will never, ever, ever experience true love and their soul snatched. Um, and, and, and that's okay. That's, they want to live in this protective barrier, but also that barrier keeps them from experiencing true love. Right. So it, it's not just women, men do this too as well. Okay. And it sounds like do this for that. It's always do this for that, this for that. If I do this, he's going to do that. If I opened up a room and said, this is how you talk to a man to get his money. I would probably have close to 500, depends, a uh, thousand probably of listeners live because they want to know what's the shortcut to just get something from him. Just like if men did a live saying, hey, this is the shortcut to getting in her panties. And this is what you say. I guarantee you he could be a poop butt who just started YouTube last week. He will get dozens of people tuning in to listen on how to shortcut opening up, getting close to a woman and getting her panties. That's the kind of world we live in, baby. That's the kind of world we live in. And I'm not going to lie to you. Relationships seem predatory. Okay. Not all bad. And in many cases, a lot of this content that I hear, it's not all bad. Some of it is really, really great content, but without understanding how to love a man, it does sound manipulative. Okay. That, that is something that is really, really bad. It sounds very manipulative 
if you're not talking about loving a man and very seldom, very, very, very seldom, I can count on my hands. If I pull up her channel right now, she's talking about love. She literally uses love in her title. It's about two or three of them. I, any random day of the week, I could pull up her video and she's talking about love. And I'm like, what a breath of fresh air. What a breath of fresh air. It's not that many channels that do that, honestly. It's always something extra. And it's so refreshing to hear women talking about love. Oh, I love, 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 love. I love, love, love. And it could be I'm in love. It could be. But women who want love need to flock to those channels. You need to flock to those channels in a heartbeat. Talking about love, 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 love. What it feels like to be in love. How does he look when he's in love? What does he say when he's in love with you? I mean, every title she has has love in it. And I'm like, oh, this, uh, I just get so warm and fuzzy on the inside. You know who I'm talking about? You can put her name in the chat over on the YouTube side. You know who I'm talking about. Long, 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 long hair. You know who I'm talking about. Every time I go to this woman's channel, and we always inbox each other on IG, so maybe hopefully she's listening, but I listen every time I pull up her channel, love, love, love. How do you feel when you fall in love? How does it feel when you fall out of love? What is what man look like when he's in love? I mean, I just love it. It's just such a breath of fresh air. Those are the channels that ladies in 2024, those of, uh, those of us that are seeking love, those of you that are seeking love, you're, um, looking to fall in love, need to flock to these channels in a heartbeat. Let her numbers go up because she's talking about love, love, um, opportunistic. That's why men can't, um, in my opinion, my professional opinion, I feel like a lot of men who would, who want to be in love, who want to fall in love, who want to get married. I'm not talking about the poop butts who don't. I'm talking about the real men who really want to fall in love and get married and start a family. They are really, really kind of like hesitant because a lot of women I don't know if they know, but in their conversation, it's all about how can I get him to do X, Y, and Z for me? It's never, how can I understand this dude? <laughs> how can I pull back and understand this man? Because if women understood, if you understand a man, all of that other stuff just kind of works itself out. It really does. I understand men. I like men. And my, yes, that's her name. That's her name. She's a, she's a queen. Yes, Devin. That's her. Yes. Every time I pull up that woman's page, <laughs> if you want to know who we're talking about, click at the click the link at the top, ladies, on, on Clubhouse so you can get in on a conversation. Every time I go to this woman's channel, love this, love that. I, mean, I think she has a set of cards about love. I mean, everything's about love, 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 love. So those are the channels we need to flock to, ladies, that give us that warm and fuzzy energy. Uh, does that make sense? We need to rid ourselves of that, that yes, her, yes, queen of the South. Yes, her. I love her channel. The other one, her sidekick that comes on her channel a lot. Um, I like her too. She just got married energy, just love, 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 love. And they equate femininity. They, they blend femininity and how women who are feminine love how we show up in relationships. And she articulates it so well. Okay. Does that make sense, ladies? Okay. So in my professional opinion, that's why a lot of men aren't rushing to marriage because a lot of times we unknowingly contribute to their fear. Um, a lot of their fear is, let me let you in on a secret. And I'm pretty sure you've been told this before, but I want to reiterate this. A lot of men out here, the reason why they harp on women so much is because they are starving for love, not craving it not needed, starving, right? When you're starving for something, don't you think about it all the time? Don't you talk about it all the time? I'm not talking about the, the dusties and the weirdos and the creepos and the busters who just talk about women and drag women and try to, you know, beat their, their inner souls out because they're upset and angry because their lives are trash. I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about guys who generally just, they just want a woman to love and get all squishy with and, hug and cupcake at the carnival and 
you know, hit the beans, uh, hit the can so she could win the teddy bear and walk around the park and eat the cotton candy. I mean, he really wants to be all warm and fuzzy inside. He really wants a woman to do what I'm getting ready to tell you ladies to do. He wants that so bad. Some men, believe it or not, did not grow up with a lot of nurturing from mama. And so not only did they grow up with that, so that's a deficit. Then the first time they have sexual experience, they think, if they didn't have a man to help guide them, they think that sexual experiences are supposed to give them that nurturing. So they unconscious, subconsciously, sorry, subconsciously seek validation, approval, and love and nurturing through that sexual conquest. Now they'll deny this till the end of time, but I strongly believe that's why so much emphasis on sex. Now, if you, this is one of the reasons, there's other reasons why men are solely seeking sex, but this, for a lot of men who did not grow up with a lot of nurturing, this is why they seek a lot of sex. Sex for them is it, that is their bond. And they can't go any deeper than that because that will reveal they're not, a, they're, they're afraid to be vulnerable, right? So they can't go too deep. They haven't had enough nurturing. And this is why they put women in these nurturing, do this for me. They start acting like little boys. Uh, let me drive your car. Do this for me. Help me pay bills. Let's go 50-50. Oops. So that's why they do that a lot because <laughs> that's why they do that a lot because they haven't had enough nurturing, right? And so women, if they haven't had a lot of nurturing, this is a bad hookup. Because she becomes mama in an essence and she loses her sexuality in becoming mama. Mama is not supposed to be sexual, okay? Mama is mama, okay? You want to be his hot wife, not his mama. I do not want to be Tony's mama, okay? I want to be something else, baby, okay? So that's what you become when you start nurturing him. Does that make sense? And so because he's looking for nurturing, he will seek women who are okay being in this position. He will seek women that are okay being workhorses for him as, as he works less and less and less, right? And, and I've seen this a lot in pretty boys, but now the ugly guys are acting like that too. Go figure. Uh, whew. I remember a day and time where ugly guys were humble, but anyway. But we live in a time where pretty much everyone has a story to tell or someone's been uh, had this traumatic episode that happened to them. And a lot of people grew up uh, with not a lot of nurturing and love, uh, not a lot of soft touches, not enough affirmations, positive affirmations. And so they seek, they, uh, seek all of these things in relationships. And of course, you're never going to get everything in a relationship. And if you don't, you leave upset, you leave mad. You leave mad, right? You leave upset, okay? A lot of women have chips on their shoulders. Um, a lot of women are um, hugely competitive and guarded with other women because of lack of nurturing, um, you know, crazy relationship with mom, father and daughter wounds, unhealed. Uh, they're going to rear their ugly heads in close encounters with men. It's unavoidable. If you have a father and daughter scar, you're going to have a tough time bonding with men, being vulnerable with men, trusting men, simply because it's a father and daughter wound. Whatever happened needs to be healed. Go talk to a professional. Um, I've helped women with father and daughter scars. It's got to be dealt with. It's got, it has to be, sweetheart. It has to. Because you can't love him the way he needs to be loved to unlock all the special things that come with men. This is why... I really am so critical of the feminist movement because they paint men out to be these big bo uh, booger bears. And I'm like, okay, yeah, there are some booger bears, but hey, the men that I've encountered in my life, there's been a couple of booger bears, but the majority of them have been great. My grandfather, my daddy, my brothers, uh, people in my church, my pastors. I have some great teachers that were awesome. I mean, I've had some, I have some good male friends. I mean, I, my son is pretty awesome. Hey, he's pretty awesome. Um, and shout out to my husband. He's a pretty nice guy. Uh, okay. So I, I've met some awesome guys in my life. Um, and I, I don't, and if ladies, if you sit down and really think about it, you've met some awesome men in your life too. And when you showed up genuine, Weren't they nice to you? Did they volunteer time? Did they volunteer? Hey, I can get that for you. I can help you. And that's just with you just being you. Not thinking about romance, not thinking about anything else, just being you. 
when you just showed up being you, didn't he just, oh, hey, what's going on? You okay, baby? What happened to you? Oh, what can I do for you? Oh, I got your lunch. Don't worry about it. Oh, you need a ride home? What can I do for you? And it was genuine. It wasn't a, a tit for tat. It, it was genuine. Why? Because you showed up genuine. Think about it. Think about it. And the feminist movement will have us believing that the down of the patriarchy. I mean, I hear people with large platforms down in patriarchy, and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. In one breath, you down patriarchy, and the next sense, you want a man to pay all your bills. How does this work? <laughs> I love patriarchy. Patriarchy holds men accountable. The church holds men accountable. Did y'all know that? People criticize the church, but the church, there is no other institution on this planet other than the American government that I know about that holds people accountable for being trash. That's the church. You can go to the church and do something crazy. They'll be talking about you forever. Did you know sister so-and-so did so? They, yes, they hold men accountable. Oh, yes, they do. Now, we have trash people who will overlook that because that's what they do. But more often than not, they lose a lot of support when they're exposed and when they do things that are not godly and, and it's put out in front street, they get held accountable. That's patriarchy. So matriarchy is run by women. They don't hold men accountable, do they? Patriarchy holds men accountable. Patriarchy says, because you are the leader, the buck stops with you. We don't ask her anything. We ask you, why is your family struggling? Why can't you keep the lights on? Why are you asking your wife to go 50 feet? What's wrong with you? Why aren't you working more hours? Didn't your wife just have a baby? What's wrong with you? That's patriarchy. And if it's anything other than what I just described, it's dysfunctional patriarchy. And so the feminists will harp on the booger bears. They will harp on the creepos and the freak women out. Don't have babies. Don't have ba They will freak you all out, baby. Ooh, the love of a man. When you snatch your soul, oh, uh, you know when you snatch your soul, because I'm going to tell you how to do it today. When you snatch a man's soul, you know you got him. He doesn't leave uh, easily. You have to kick him out, slam the door, lock the door, move houses, move states. <laughs> this man, you can't get rid of this man. When you snatch his soul, he's connected to you now. Where are you going, woman? You mine. Where are you going? When you snatch a man's soul, that's when he really falls in love with you. Not this surface love that you hear on social media. I'm talking about that real deep kind of love. Hit the link at the top, y'all, so y'all can follow along and come chat with us over here on YouTube. When you really connect with a man, man, that's deep, man. Okay, so, um, so it's unaffordable. So if you have a problem, okay, with this title or this subject of this video, it's going to sound... It's gonna um it's gonna be a little bit difficult, and it's a good sign that there are some father and daughter wounds or some trauma wounds that are unhealed that's gonna make it difficult for you to open up, okay? And so I'm just giving you the heads up that uh make your departure now if any of this triggers you, because this isn't about how to love a woman, this is about how to love a man. Loving a, a man in today's social climate. It takes courage. It takes courage for you to come and be vocal about your love for a man, your desire to be loved for a man, right? Performing in femininity, selfish manipulation, opportunistic, feminist mindset, all of these things will keep you from experiencing true love with a man. There's no way around it. Sorry, baby. I wish it was a shortcut. I wish you could get around working on father and daughter wounds, but unfortunately it's not because loving a man really strips you of you. You you literally start to melt into each other. He loses a part of himself and you lose a part of yourself in this love for each other because you're giving so much. Both of you, when it's true love, when it's meant to be, and you're both open and vulnerable with each other, you both start to lose each other a little bit and you start to melt. That's why people say when well, couples have been together for so long, they start looking alike. That's because they're, you can tell they're happy <laughs> because they start looking together. They're giving to one another freely, right? That's true love. Society is almost anti-male. So to declare love to a man is almost revolutionary. It really is. Sh shout out to you ladies that get on social media bragging about how much money your husband spent on you. Um, and, and all of that, you need to be careful. 
because there's a lot of women that are jealous hearted and they will come for you. That's just the type of world we live in that they don't really want love. They want items. They want um, things. So you all need to be real, real careful about what you put on social media. You can say the Lord bless me. We live in good. We live in just be smart. Married ladies, women that are engaged, solidified, you, you deep in the relationship. Just you just need to close your mouth about everything that he's doing for you. I know they had the living girlfriend article I saw in Wall Street Journal where she's, you know, these living girlfriends online bragging about what their boyfriends are buying. That's for them to do because that stuff is short lived. But women that you this is you, this is your life. Yes, the home records. Listen, I, I don't bite my tongue. They are real, they are for real. You ladies on social media need to watch what you put and say on social media because you literally put an X on your man's back for these home records. Oh, so he, oh, so they're riding in a PJ. Oh, so he bought her this house. Oh, the oh, oh, oh. And so the people that don't want true love, the women that I'm talking about that are kind of jaded, you put an X on your husband's back for them to come try. Because that's the kind of world we live in, unfortunately. So check out my my video that I talked about homeworkers and I kind of listed them all. <laughs> and I saw my viewership go down after that. That lets you know, it's a lot of women that are homeworkers. Uh, that's that, that their mindset is okay with that. Well, um, well, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do at home, then once you become a wife, you will realize men do have their own brains. You do realize that. And I could do everything I possibly can in my power. If that man wants to cheat or do whatever he wants to do, <laughs> he's going to do it. And just go ahead and admit that you like sleeping with married men. And don't put that on the wives. But that's the kind of society we live in that, hey, it's open sesame. If he's in front of me, I'm taking him. That's their mindset. So, ladies, if you're married, you definitely need to listen to this. And make sure you're doing everything on this list. And if you're with a man that you really like and you, fall your, you feel yourself falling in love, you definitely need to pay attention to this. Right. And this is why betting is so key um, so that you don't fall in love or get too attached to the wrong guy. The sexy, fine, the sexy, broke, successful, but he's a jerk. Uh, always putting you in rotation. You want to make sure you vet well so that you're not with these guys. Some jerks, some guys are just jerks and no matter how good you treat them, they won't love you back. That's real. So pay attention to red flags and exciting guys who don't show up for you. But consult God in every situation and vet well. OK, so now that I have that out of the way, loving someone on a uh, on a very deeply involves a blend of understanding, respect and emotional connection and without emotional connection. A man can easily walk away from you with no guilt. This is why some women who are super, super beautiful. And I did a video on this already. So go look up the one I might have privated. Uh, it was talking about gorgeous and single. Why are you gorgeous and single? I talked about this. Why the super beautiful women are still single. And the reason why is my pro professional assessment is because they are great at connecting on a surface level. But they are very, very bad at connecting on a deeper level. And if they do connect on a deeper level, it's not with the right guy. So they tend to remain single until forever, until they figure that out. Men are not going to show vulnerability first. So if you think you're going to get with a guy and you're going to get him to drop his defenses first, and I know what a lot of women do, um, they teach you to go get an ugly guy, get an old guy, Get a socially awkward guy, get a nerdy guy, a fat guy, uh, you know, someone like that who is not really uh, uh, popular in the sexual market, in the dating market. Go get him. He's going to be so glad to get you. You won't have to compete. You won't have to deal with all these other things. And you can get away with murder and he'll be so glad he'll open up to you when you can safely open up to him or you can safely, you know, ram his pockets. That's what's being taught out here. But I'm here to tell you, ladies, oh, I go deep into some areas and I'm going to tell you right now. I've heard men talking and let me tell you, they know they know you're coming for them. They know you're not sexually attracted to them. They know you don't want them. They know that you are targeting them because they fat. <laughs> you're targeting them because they're ugly. You're tar targeting them because they look like Quasimodo on a good night. You're targeting them because they are socially awkward. These Steve Urkel type 
I don't know, screech looking guys from Saved by the Bell, they know that you're not the top of the food, that you know that they're not the top of the food chain. And they know that you're not choosing them organically first. They know you're coming. <sighs> Let me say it again. Let me say it again because some people might catch it. They know you are coming. So if you're looking for this to be your strategy, it's not enough of those guys to go around because even those guys are saying, yeah, I'm not doing that. Right. And if I do that, it's sort of like this transactional deal, which makes you feel crappy because you're like, I'm not that type of girl, but that's the strategy. And they know that you're not organically attracted to them in a way that's romantic and in a way that's a relationship builder. You're there because you're trying to extract resources. They know this. They know you're coming. They're prepared. That's why they go to these little spots online. They get information. They're paying coaches. Just like I tell you all to get with the mentor. Oh, they're getting with coaches. They're getting on these channels. They're getting to, yeah, they don't really like you like that. They're coming for you. They're coming for you because you're the good guy. All of this stuff. They're telling the men they're coming for you. And so they're rating on you. So, um, and they know that you're not trying to love them deeply is my point. So how do you get a man to love? How do you love a man deeply? Right? I mean, that was just so default for me. How do you get a man? Because that's how much we talk about how to get a man. But let's talk about how do we love a man deeply? How do we snatch this man's soul? The first one is listen to hear, not to respond. Well, don't we have to hear, Nicole? Yes, you have to hear, but are you really hearing him? Have you ever talked to somebody and you're like, wong, 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 wong. It, it feels like you're talking to them like that. Wong, 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 wong. And they're preoccupied. They're looking in their phone. They're looking away. They're eyeing somebody. They're doing the head check with someone as you're speaking. It's sort of like they're not really 100% there with you in the moment as you're speaking. Can you imagine trying to have a conversation with someone who's not paying attention to you? Can you imagine? That's what's going on with men when they talk to women. Uh-huh. Yeah. You're in your phone. You're playing with your hair. You're looking in the mirror. Yeah, that's you, baby girl. That's you. Men need a sounding board. Men are human. <gasps> that was so insightful. Men are human. They need a sounding board. They do. They don't always need advice from you. You are fantastic with business. You have a million degrees. Every woman that I've worked with is very accomplished and high achieving and beautiful. You have all of that going on. And guess what? You know what he needs from you? A listening ear. He needs you to just hear him. Don't try to dissect what he's saying. Don't try to give him advice. Don't try to tell him what to do. Just listen. Just listen. Look in his eyes and listen. And to reassure him that you're listening. Okay, so let me see if I understand you correctly. This is what you're saying. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. And kind of repeat back what he's saying. That's someone that's listening. What women do, we get in the habit of doing is listening to respond. So as he's speaking, you're so worried about your response to him that you're preparing your response as he's speaking so you really don't hear him. And here's the thing that I tell women all the time. You learn so much from a man when you just shut up and listen. Just, just let men talk. They tell you how to get them, how to get them to fall in love, what they like, how their ex-girlfriend or ex-wife messed up, <laughs> how, to, how to get from him what you want. He literally tells you everything as you talk. Just let him talk. But what women want to do, we want to get it in and let him know our boundaries and let him know, get him told and let him know what he can't get away with. And we're so busy, worried about a response that we don't even listen to the man. They don't always need advice from us. They just need someone to listen and really hear them. A lot of times when they speak to their, their best friends, that's masculine energy and they can only go so far. They need a woman to kind of be a diary. Okay, let me keep tabs of what he's saying. Let me write it down. Let me keep it in my spirit as much as possible. And keep that and, and remember it. 
Did you catch the name of the family member that died that he was close to? Huh? Do you remember the story he told you about a childhood incident that brought up feelings for him? Did he start talking about a family member and get teary eyed? Did he talk about, uh, you know, a friend of his that passed away years ago and it touched him? And do you remember the name of that friend? Do you remember when it happened? Can you remember the details of that story? These are the minute details that get men to really pay attention and slow down and pump the brakes on you. Because most women don't take the time. They're just there to extract resources. A woman that wants to love a man deeply and snatch his soul can remember a story that he told her six years ago and remember the details down to the bullet points. So is that the cousin, boo-boo, you was telling me about that did such and such and such to you when you were six years old and then you had to go to the hospital, get stitches on your finger and you had that blue shirt on and you had a stain and it never came out and they was teasing you at school because you had to... Guess what? He's paying attention. Wait, she remembers that crap? She remembers me telling her that story. Men will never, ever tell you how much that impresses him. He will never, men will tell, you know why? Because first, the first time he do it, he'll be shocked. The first time he does it, he's like, did she just, no, no, I, I, I'm imagining thing. No, she didn't really do that. The second time you do it, he knows your keeper. Because most women are too selfish to remember anything other than their next beauty shop appointment. <laughs> most women are so selfish, they can't think past themselves. But when you can remember, okay, this particular day of the year is painful for my man. So I need to be extra tender on this day because this day is a day a family member passed away or a day his best friend got shot or a day that he lost the competition or the day my man lost the Super Bowl. If you're dating a football player, you know, you know what I mean? Like you remember those milestones, those watershed moments in his life and it endears you to them. And you remember, and it shows that you actually care about him. Most women won't, especially the real pretty ones. They don't ever. They can't remember past next week. Oh, wait, uh, what day is that? Oh, they don't. Most women um, that are good girls, we remember stuff like that. Don't we, ladies? We remember stuff like that. We're like, oh, so that's the time you were riding your 10 speed and you were down the street and then you ran into such and such and then, then y'all went down the street and then you turned the corner and then oh okay that's him oh okay nice to meet you oh I remember that story he told me that story two years ago and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> he's like wait did she remember that wait no she didn't remember that story yeah she remembered that story and then you do it two or three times he's like whoa she's into me that's how men think Try not to listen to a man when he's talking and pick apart or dissect everything he's saying. Just listen. I hate it personally. I hate it when I'm talking because a lot of times when I'm real emotional or I'm, it's an emotionally charged situation, I sometimes can misspeak, misuse words, <laughs> stutter, because <laughs> I'm really I'm, I'm, I'm caught up in a moment, right? And I hate it when people go correcting me in the middle of the sen sentence. And, and, and then I forget my whole train of thought. N then I be begin to get frustrated because I didn't get out what I had to say. Men operate similar to that. It's like, let them get it out and then go back and ask questions for clarity. Okay. Just let him finish. Let him f finish. Take mental footnotes. And then go, okay, so let me see if I understand this correctly. Oh, I didn't catch that part. Can you repeat that part for me? Because I didn't really catch that. I want to make sure I understand what's going on here. And remember what he tells you. That means, ladies, when you're masters of the universe, your blue chip guy or your hedge fund guy, those type of guys give you something one time and they expect you to remember it because that's what kind of industry he's in. He's a global, international businessman, global man. And so he doesn't expect to tell you something five or six times when he says, um, the, my, my, um, my estate manager is coming over at such and such, or my estate, um, um, 
my accountant is coming over. We're going to discuss the uh, the, the uh, details of the estate. I want to make some changes. Make sure the locks are whatever. He's giving specific instruction, uh, instructions for 3 p.m. And we need to go over into the dining room where we can, you know, stretch out or we can go into my office. Make sure you're ready and here at three o'clock because he'll be here. I need you to open up the gate and blase, blase. He does not expect to tell you that twice. You need to have those details down. That's why you ladies that want these masters of the universe, blue chip type of guys, you can't remember from here to there. Problem. Okay, I'm telling I work for lawyers and they will say something one time. I, will, I, I walked around with a pad. I went to the ladies' room with a pad. I went to the meetings with a pad. <laughs> I wrote stuff down. No, no, no. You said at 2.46 p.m. on Tuesday that on Friday, I needed to have this in Fulton County <laughs> Superior Court. Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're, you're right. You're right. I know I'm right because I wrote it down. Because if you work for attorneys, you know that they will forget. Uh, they will forget their court calendar and they will... <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, 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 no. You said to, and you read it back to him that, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. You kind of have to be like that with a masters of the universe. Practice it, ladies. Practice it. If that's the kind of man you want and you can't take instructions and you're like, well, why are we doing it this way? Why are we doing it? You can't, no, 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 no. That's not the man for you. Those men say one thing once and you better get it down pat. You do not pad the information. You don't change the information, alter the information. No. He said, have the gate open. He said, you needed to be in, in place at three o'clock and open the door for us. <laughs> and you are where? Oh, I thought you said 315. My bad. Guess how long you'll keep that guy. Anyway, ever try talking to someone and then they, they, they don't seem like they're listening? This is what I'm talking about, ladies, specifically. If you can get this down pat, baby. Woo. This is this is what it doesn't necessarily guarantee you a ring, but it does make him pump the brakes on you. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This one's special. Hold up. Hold up. The next one goes hand in hand with this one. Be a great conversationalist. I know I talked about this last week, but let me reiterate it because I cannot stress this enough. And in 2024, I'm going to be talking about this an awful lot. And I'm not just talking about how to say sweet things to him, how to get him to give you money, how to, no, I'm talking about how to talk to this man to get him to open up because when you can get a man to open up and start talking to you, I mean, talking, talking, like talking to you, you have done, you've batted a thousand. Do you think that these super, super famous men or super important men talk a lot? Put a one in the chat if you think those men talk a lot. You really think that they talk to random women a lot? I just want to know where your where your where your level is. Put a one in the chat if you actually think these men sit down here and literally start talking to every woman they laying up with, or every woman they went to dinner with. <laughs> come on now, come on. No, they don't. When he's talking, look him in his eyes, touch his arm, repeat what he says. Seduction only goes so far because I, I hear a lot of women using seduction tips when talking to men. This is great um, when it's transactional and it's great if you've already snatched your soul. But if you haven't snatched that man's soul and you, you're trying to do all that sexy, seductive crap, he's like, OK, so I got another one. She thinks she's pulling the wool over my eyes. Jokes on her. I'm going to smash her, make her do all these dirty, nasty, funky things with me tonight. And then I'm not going to call her back. That's how grimy men think. They think, oh, oh, she thinks she getting over. Oh, okay. I got her. Yeah, I'm going to make her do something real freaky tonight. Do some dirty, nasty, funky. And then I'm not going to call her back. That's how petty men are. Right. That's when you don't have a rapport with them. They men are super, super petty. You know this. You know this already. OK, so they are human beings, but they are petty. They don't do a lot of confrontation. They don't do a lot of but they are petty. And this is how they petty when they figure out, oh, you just want to skip getting close to me. You just want to try to seduce me and manipulate me sexually. Bet. 
Okay. All right. Open up them legs. Let me stick it here. Let me do this. Let me bend it over. Let me put your leg up here. Do this. Do that. Do my friend. Do this. Do and then after you do all those nerd, dirty, nasty things because you think you're seducing them. Uh, I'm I'm seducing him. I ain't sexy. As soon as you do all that, that phone is not ringing. You're like, girl, I just wanted to call and make sure you call. You're calling uh, T-Mobile and Verizon. Hello. Is anything wrong with my service? I haven't got a phone call in two days. Ma'am, your phone is fine. Your bill is due on the 12th. It, what else can I help you with? That's where you get. Because he's like, oh, oh, she thinks she's finessing me. Cool. And he'll get you to do every dirty, funky thing he can think of and won't call you back. Look him in his eyes when he's talking. Put your phone down when he's talking. Look in his eyes. Smile at him when he's talking. If he's talking about something serious, look like you're talking about something serious. Right. If it's the children, baby, baby, the adults are talking. I'll talk to you in a moment. I've seen women talking to their husbands and the child walks up. Mommy, 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 mommy. Yeah, baby. Oh, wait, wait just a second, honey. Let me go see about the kid. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. When you're married, baby, you see me talking to daddy. Wait till I'm done talking to daddy and I'll talk to you now. The feminist will have a heart attack by be saying that, but that's how that's how it's run. When a man is doing, he's supposed to, no, 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 no. My mother, uh, many a times, I would come in the room boldly. Mama, I need such and such. Excuse me, pause. Don't you see me talking to your father? Yeah, but I need, wait just a second. Daddy finishes sentence and then, okay, what is it that you need? You do not interrupt your father when he's talking. So that taught me respect for men, right? That needs to happen in marriages. Basic respect. I'm going to cover that in a second. So I know feminists are listening to this and their heads are exploding, but that's how it's supposed to be. There shouldn't be some little person that marks in, excuse me, <laughs> wait, don't you see me talking to your dad? Yeah, but mommy, I don't, pause just a second. I'm talking to your father. Don't you see grown folks talk? And this was their favorite, favorite thing to say. Don't you see two grown people talking? That was their favorite thing to say. And that irritated my soul. <laughs> and I find myself doing the same thing. Don't you see two grown people talking right now? Don't you see us talking? Because a, a lot of young kids are just so rude. I'm 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 from that old that old. I was raised by old people, so uh, just a lot of stuff that these kids do is just downright. Ooh, disrespectful. And my mother would, and my parents would be like, don't you see grown people talking? Okay, well, just wait your turn. And, <laughs> and you're like, well, Nicole, what if they busted their head? Okay, that's extreme. That's obviously a medical emergency. Come on, people. That, come on, people. <laughs> come on, people. Stop playing. We, we're, we're adults now. We're not little girls. We are women. And yeah, see, my numbers went down when I said that because a lot of women know the kid comes first. And then you wonder why men don't go out of their way for you. That's why. Because you don't understand hierarchy in a family. It's Christ, husband, wife, children. That's how it's supposed to be. Look, adults are talking right now. Give me a second. We'll see about you, right? If your head is split to the white meat, <laughs> to the bone obviously where that's a medical a medical emergency but most instances it's not the child can wait and they're being rude they have to be taught conversation etiquette that's basic etiquette you don't interrupt anyone you don't go in the job going in the break room you see two of your co-workers talking and you just just a buttinsky you just start talking if you do that don't do that anymore okay that's horrible conversation etiquette that's teaching children conversation etiquette we don't do that right same thing in marriage right i'm talking i'm talking to my husband i don't get off the phone with my husband to go to call my best friend now i can dismiss myself from a conversation hey you know my best friend she's calling she has an issue can i call you back or you know maybe he's at work or something and oh yeah baby call me back at work or something whatever but um, just if you're talking to a man long distance, you're trying to build a rapport, um, text your friend. Look, I'll call you at the end of this conversation. It should give me another 20 minutes. That's setting a time like, hey, and when the 20 minutes is up, hey, listen, I was on the phone 
um, uh, my friend texts me. She she wants to talk something. Let me talk to you back. Same thing with um, the best friend. You would want the same courtesy if the shoe was on the other foot. What if his friend called and you were talking to him? He's like, hey, 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 my best friend is calling me. Wait, huh? Are you trying to build a relationship with your, with your boy or with me? And you know you would. Ladies, be honest. You know you would look sideways at him if he got off the phone with you every time his friend called. You know, why every time his phone? Why every time I'm talking to him, his boy calls and he gets off the phone with me, his boy. Now you start looking sideways. You start scrunching up your eyebrows. You're like, his boy, huh? Uh-huh. Let me start researching some stuff because he's he's mighty close to that boy. Same thing with men. Make him a priority, right? When you're talking in a conversation, be insightful. Be interesting. Have a personality. Open up. Share with people. Share experiences. Share what happened to you in proper context and without revealing so much, right? But be open, be, be conversational, right? Be open to the exchange, exchange ideas, right? Expand your vocabulary to where you feel confident speaking. And that when you are in certain social circles, you don't clam up because you feel like you have some ridiculous imposter syndrome. You should never have imposter syndrome. You belong where you belong, but you do need confidence to stay there and show up in a very good way, right? So, Bring out your personality. Give him you. Um, let's see, be engaging, be insightful, add something to the conversation. And here is another thing that snatches a man's soul is when you have the ability to create a safe space. <sighs> this is a space where you kind of make it clear to him. I don't repeat what I hear and what's said between you and I stays between you and I, unless you, you know, say that it's not a big deal. But if you indicate to me that this is a private conversation, it stays that way, or it just stays that way, period, unless it's otherwise stated. I do not repeat what I hear or what's said. A lot of women, let me help you understand something. When you start dating masters of the universe, uh, hedge fund, blue chip type of guys, if you're the chatty patty types, you will never, ever, 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 ever get in those circles, running your mouth. Everything you post on social media, everything you put uh, on your Instagram stories, everything you put on there that you got your ticket scanned at the gate, you put on there that you sat down in the first class seat, you put on there a picture of you in the skies, then you put on a picture of you walking through the airport, then you put a picture on social media about the the the, the, the outfit that you changed on in when you got <laughs> to the hotel. <laughs> like it's like okay, this woman likes being on social media and she likes to overshare. He's already summing you up. He doesn't need to ask you that. He's just observing that your need for attention. Scale back some of that stuff. Those type of men need women that know how to be quiet. They know how to be quiet. Okay. Is that okay? They know how to be quiet. They respect a man's privacy. And you would want the same. If you did something dirty and nasty or said something or accidentally made a mistake or did something, you don't want him putting that on blast, the world to, to put you on blast, right? You don't want him to put that on some social media site or if he's in a, a group to put your name out there. Oh, yeah, she's a big old freak. Yeah, I did this, 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 and that. And that we, you know, women, you don't like your name to be talked about after a relationship. You're very sensitive about that. So men are not as sensitive about the back end. They are sensitive about what happens in a relationship. What are you sharing? Why is this, uh, this, this need to show everybody that what we're doing and, you know, what hotel we're staying in and what, you know, what we're eating for dinner. And it's one thing to do that every now and then or to showcase, but if you're going to do it, showcase the restaurant. Not, oh, look where he took me. Look what he did. Showcase the restaurant or showcase the actual locale if you're going to do that, ladies. That's how you play that off. Most of the time, women, um, this it's all about them. 
All right. But we create a safe space, a non judgmental safe space for him to open up and come out of himself because a lot of women don't, they're chatty patties. And so they don't feel safe enough to, uh, to, to speak. They don't feel safe enough to open up. So they clam up and they just go along. Have you ever been with a man? He's super attractive. He's got it going on, but he doesn't talk a lot. Even in, even in text message, he doesn't talk a lot. He's very matter of factly. He's point for point for point. He doesn't really open up. Got to get him open up. Got to get him up to open up. Very, uh, sometimes it's, he's emotionally unavailable, but you shouldn't make that the, the, the assumption every single time. Sometimes it's our skill set because an emotionally unavailable man can still talk. You see what I mean? He still can have great conversation and still be emotionally unavailable. So I don't want you just to assume, oh, he's emotionally unavailable. He's not open to love. And that's that's not always the case. I've seen some men who never fall in love. They have a plethora of women and they are great conversationalists with every single woman <laughs> across the board. Uh, so you can't sum that up, but you do need to get to the bottom of what's going on with him or things with him. How are you really doing? How's things going with you? Really? I'm concerned. I haven't heard from you in quite some time. This is how you build rapport with your friends. Hey, I haven't heard from you. Uh, what's going on? Is everything good? I just want to touch bases. You know, I sent an email to a friend of mine last night. I said, wait a minute, you crossed my mind. I haven't heard from you. I haven't seen you post on social media. What's going on, girl? Do I need to come to North Carolina? What's going on? Talk to me now. What's going on? You got a new page? Did you dip? Like, what's going on? You cross my mind. I'm praying for you. That's the same thing you do with a man. Hey, you cross my mind. I haven't seen you post. Uh, you know, what's going on? Right? Uh, you seem distant. The last time we spoke, you seemed distant. Um, you seemed like you weren't really there. Is everything going, you know, is everything okay? Uh, you know, what's going on? Right? That means a lot because that means you're paying attention and you're a great conversationalist. You're getting him to open up. And if he feels that it's safe to open up, he'll tell you what's going on. And that's when you start doing what I just told you to do. Listen, listen to hear, not to respond. That's when you do that. Once you get him open. Now he's like, whoa, I like talking to her because I feel safe. I like to talk. And Men don't go around saying, I like talking to her. They just say, she's good. She's good. I like, she's, she's good to talk to. Or they'll say she's just cool. That's when a man says she's just cool. A lot of times that's what that means. She's just cool. That means you're good to talk to, which is an excellent description. Um, that's good to have on your resume that guys like talking to you. Guys like you easy going. You're not uptight. You're not um, trying to make a point with every single conversation. Guys love this. Everybody on Clubhouse hit the link at the top. I'm going to go blank over here. Hit the link at the top so you can join us on YouTube because the next few to snatch your soul are going to be great. Thank you. So anyway, um, so many women are too into themselves and they miss the conversation part, right? They miss the conversation part. And it's, it's, it's really bad because um, that's the part where you really get to snatch your soul is that conversation piece. Because when you get a person talking, people remember the person that gets them talking. But when they listen more, um, they don't fall in love as fast. When it's when it's mostly you talking, they don't fall in love as fast as you getting them to talk. If you can get a man to talk, baby, that's half the battle. <laughs> You're halfway to a ring. If you can get him to talk. Most women he's laying up with are not talking to him. They are doing what they do and they're getting up, doing a walk of shame. And there it is. Getting their little money that he promised them and then they're on their way. Or, you know, they had their little dinner and whatever. They're hoping he calls and whatever. Why would he call? There's nothing to talk about. Conversation is boring. It's stale. All she wants to know is where are you taking me next? I'm pretty. Aren't you taking me, picking me up in your fancy car and taking me somewhere? Are you taking me on a trip? Are you going to dote on me? What are you going to buy me next? He wants to know, what can we talk about? Can you talk about me? Can you talk about something interesting? Practice empathy. Show empathy. Try to understand things from his perspective. This is hard right here. 
because as women, we want to be heard so much and, and we should, we're women who want to be heard. Our voice should be heard in society in the world. But listen, if you can empathize with a man and put yourself in his shoes, you're batting a thousand. Empathy can strengthen emotional connection and understanding. A woman that can literally see things from him, his point of view is a woman that's going to be smart because most women fight over a man instead of fighting for a man. The woman that fights for a man is going to get a ring. The woman that fights over a man is going to get dissed. More often than not, she gets dissed, played, put in rotation, done in. The woman that fights for a man shows that she's on his team. She's down for him. She's loyal. She loves him. That's, and I'm not talking about getting out in the street fighting that, that, no, that is beneath. Ugh, ugh, ugh. No, that is that reality show type stuff. No, 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 no. That is beneath us. We don't do that here. What I'm talking about is fighting for him. Take his side in a situation. If it's a situation where it's, it's, you know, it's just, and you hear him talking, he's distressed. You're like, man, they did you so wrong. I can't believe that. Wait till I see him next time. He was going to get a piece of my mind. He's going to get to see the ratchet side of me, <laughs> you know, something like that. He's like, whoa, she got a ratchet side of her. And whoa, she let the ratchet side out for me. Now he will never let you see that. He'll never say that to you. But he is like feeling like, whoa, my woman really loves me. She's getting ready to take her earrings off and put her hair back and fight for me. Wow. I'm not talking about fighting other women. See, think, think above reality TV here. I'm not talking about that lowbrow reality TV stuff. I'm talking about fighting for him. Like, you know, making a statement to the press. I believe my husband. I stand by my husband 100%. I don't know what this is. I got his back. Um, standing by him. Not too much on my husband. Who are you talking? To? You do understand I'm sitting here. That is my man. You do understand. You're talking about my man and my presence. A lot of times your friends will inadvertently start talking about your man while you're sitting there. And they think it's okay to berate your man in your presence, go, wait, 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 hold up. <laughs> y'all my friends, but um, you all are my, my. we're cool. We're friends. We're like sisters, but that's my man. Respect my man. Now, not too much on his, you know, on his top, right? That's how you stand up for him. Now, wait a minute. Hold up. I hear what you're saying, but I also hear what he's saying. And eventually we'll get to the truth. And that's how I need it to be for right now. Don't tell me how I need to see my own man. Let me figure that out for myself. I hear what you're saying. I'm taking it into consideration. And I also hear his side. And let me figure this out. And I know the feminists are listening. It's always supposed to take, we're always supposed to take the woman's side. But I know how women lie. And I know how jealous they are. And I know a lot of times women will sleep with your man. <laughs> they will sleep with your man right after they told you he was cheating. So all of that, you need to break up with him because he's cheating. And they will go and lay up with him just because. Because you said he was a good man. And you said he was this and that. So they want to go test it. That's how grimy women are. So when it comes to your man, I'm not saying take his um, when he's wrong, because I don't believe in defending people when they're wrong. When you're wrong, you're wrong. OK, however, in certain situations and you be the judge of that. Right. You be the judge. You're his queen. You go. You know what? I see your side, you know, but honey, can I, you know, shed some light on some things and, you know, impart my insight on a couple of things, if you don't mind, but tread lightly with that. But what you do want to convey to him is that, hey, I'm on your side. And when you're communicating and arguing with a man, this goes back to communication. Never look at the man like he's your enemy. The man is not your enemy. The feminists have made you all have this posture with men that they're out to get you, that they're this, this these big boogeyman. And I get it. I understand. But and that's based on pain which is why you won't have a successful relationship taking that position. All of this 90, 90 to 95% of the videos online that I hear has an undertone of dislike of men. I don't care how many views they get, how popular they get. It has an undertone that they don't like men. I've, I've sent videos to men. I'm like, how, what do you think about this video? It's like, uh, doesn't sound like she likes being very much or some kind of variation of that. I'm telling you, I've done my research and I'm telling you a lot of stuff you hear online. They have an undertone that they don't like men. 
And that is like, get over on a man. They can hear that. And so when you're arguing with a man, if you have this unhealed trauma, remember I told you it will trigger it. It comes up. You think he's your enemy. He's not your enemy. If you can show empathy and show that, hey, I'm not against you. I'm for you. Like we're on the same team, right? You're my heart. I'm there for you. If you can show that, you're batting a thousand. You're batting a thousand. You're showing empathy. Put yourself in his shoes. That's hard to do. That's big to do. Try to see some things from his point of view before assuming the worst. Before you assume the worst, okay? Try to see things from it from his point of view. It won't always work out in his favor because sometimes he will be wrong. But it will cut down on the arguments and the attacks and the personal uh, low blows because you do he, when you finally do say, hey, baby, you were kind of wrong on that one. He'll hear you because you do take his side. Now, if you say he's wrong all the time, you either need to get, need a, a, a new man <laughs> or you just need to kind of relax and kind of see things from his point of view sometimes. Right. Remember, he's not your enemy. And when you love someone, you try to find out the best in them, even in the worst situations. You try to find the good in their intentions behind what they did. And this is why listening to feminist rhetoric and some of this stuff that you hear online all day long is because you take this posture, he must be wrong. Whenever a celebrity gets in trouble, they automatically have already uh, uh, found him guilty in the a court of public opinion before all the details have come out he's guilty that's it and i understand because most of the time they are guilty but to take that posture right off the gate all the time every every time 100 that's a problem and that really does mean okay that really does mean um that you really don't have faith that your man has your best interest at heart and that's sad because if you're going to be with a man, you can't be vulnerable with somebody you think wants to do you in. Okay. You want to be with a man that really wants the best for you. That's what I mean. Okay. Um, and how would you feel if the tables were turned and things were happening to you and he seemed to always take the other person's side? That would hurt, right? That would hurt. That would hurt you deeply. I would imagine. So it's the same thing with men, right? acceptance this is a huge one acceptance accept him flaws and all where he is right now when i talk to women who want to be married who already are seeing somebody or they have somebody in mind i'm like look are you happy where he is right now because if you're not then you don't need to continue courting him because that's a recipe for disaster because in essence what you're doing can you all hear me on the YouTube side? Because in essence, what you're doing is you're signing up to be his mommy. Because what mommies do is tie your shoes and walk you to school and do things for you. When you sign up to be his queen, you have... Okay, you can't hear us. Okay, good. When you... Thank you, Toya. When you are his queen... You sign up to be his support system, his help me. So you have confidence in who he is. You have confidence and belief in him, right? He has um, built it within him a system that works and that he is determined to do the best. And you believe that. A lot of women will get with a man and go, hey, I know that what I do for him or what I can do, I can get you know, extract the best out of him. I can make him do X, Y, and Z. You can't make him do anything. You can influence him in a feminine way, but at the end of the day, he still needs to have the drive to want to be better. And so a lot of women get with these guys because he's attractive or because they are attracted to him or, you know, he's got, he's exciting, but he has nothing else going for him. He doesn't have a track record for doing the things that she wants him to do. And so she gets in a relationship thinking, because I'm attracted to him, that should be enough to want to incentivize him to be better, to do better for me because I'm hot, I'm sexy, I'm this and that. No, that's not how that works. Many women think the opposite. Um, they go in saying, I'll get him to make more money. I'll get him to be different. I'll improve him. No, that's not how you show acceptance, right? That's not how you bring out the best in him. That's not how you snatch his soul. It's actually the other way around. This is how you snatch a man's soul. When a man feels accepted, 
for who he is, where he is right now, he automatically is motivated to improve and do better. Automatically. It's just, it's something biologically wired in them. Now, I'm not talking about the dodo birds who will forever be losers. Most of them are online. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about real men in real life who get out here and have real results. I'm talking about them. If they find a woman that accepts them, hey, baby, I love what you're doing right now. I think you're the man right now. You got it going on right now. Oh, I love that about you. I love that about you, how you work so hard and you're so smart. And oh my God, I love that about you. When he finds her and she really means it, I'm not talking about just gassing him up. I'm talking about she really means it. He's like, oh, I got to do better. I got to do better because she likes me here. I got to do better. Now, that can backfire because some women will pour into a man that's a loser. So you'll get with a man who's a bum because you're attracted to him. You go, hey, baby, you the man. How is he the man? He's been on your couch all day, baby. How is he the man? He's been playing Madden all day. How is he the man? He's been playing with AI Mid Journey all day. What What are you talking about? How is he the man? How is he the man? He can't keep a job, huh? How is How is he the man? <laughs> right? He hasn't called his children in six months. How is he the man? He's with you and your children, but he hasn't called his own biological children in months. How is he the man? Explain. Explain. Enlighten us. How is he the man? No, that's not who you pour into. I'm talking about real producers, real men out here in the real world. When you tell him, oh, baby, you the man. You got this. I, I, I love it. I love how you're doing that. I love when you show acceptance for where he is right now, that empowers him to do more because it's like, okay, she accepts me for who I am. It's only the bums who who get that type of acceptance from women and they literally that empowers them to sleep on the couch even longer <laughs> because they were non-productive to begin with. But when you give that type of acceptance to a producer, a real producer, he's like, Oh no, I got to get her that house. Oh no, man. I have to give her that car, her dream car. I have to give it that dream vacation. I have to give it to her. I have to. It's sort of like when they told us in church, you force God to bless you when you bless others. When, when you accept or another way they said you can force God's hand to bless you is when you say thank you for what you already have. Just thank God for what you already have. God says, okay, they, they appreciate what I've already done. Now I can do more. That's how you force God's hand to give you a blessing. Thank God for that. That was, I, I was speaking to myself for that. Thank God for where you already are. He can take you to the next level. Thank God for what you already have. He can take you to the next level and give you the next blessing. But until you appreciate where you are right now, that's where you're always going to be. That's where it's always going to be. That's your story and no more bigger blessings than what you already have. The reason why some of you are stagnant in life respectfully is because you don't appreciate where you already are. You don't appreciate the thousand followers that you already have. You want a hundred thousand followers. Well, you don't appreciate the thousand followers. Do you return their messages? Do you return their emails? Do you show up as your best self in front of your audience to get a thousand, a hundred thousand people? That's what I'm talking about. Appreciation where you are. And men need to feel that you appreciate him where he's at. Why would he work himself to the bone, the smithereens bones for a woman who doesn't even appreciate what he is offering now? So if I work myself to the bone, there's no guarantee that she will like me then. So why would I work myself to the bone? That's a man's logic. So if she appreciates me here, I know that I can do better. Now, if you're with a loser who's not a producer, you can't do that. Okay, that, that won't work. I'm telling you right now, right? So if you aren't happy with the man that you have now, where he is now, let him go. Let him go. Let someone else deal with it. That's not love. That's manipulation. It's masculinity and it's leading from the back and you become his mother. So don't do that. When you say things like, I wasn't attracted to you when I first saw you, but you know, you're growing on me. That's first of all, that's not a very flattering statement, but I hear women saying it all the time and it cringe. I cringe every time I say, I hear that. <sighs> and if the man is smart, he knows what you're telling him. He knows that you're telling him, well, he knows. 
that's not something that we should be saying. <laughs> and it, what it says is, I don't really accept you for who you are. I kind of settled and I will always be looking to for something better. I'm always going to be looking for a better deal. Most men that are smart are thinking that when they hear a woman say that, but you definitely wouldn't want to say that man, say that to your man. I wasn't really attracted to you at first, but you grew on me. So it's like, okay, after a while, I just, I took a second look at you and I said, okay, I guess. It's like color purple when the two sisters came up and he was like, well, I haven't seen the other sister. Let me see her. And then he was like, oh, okay, I guess. That's, it's the same energy. Like, yeah, I ain't seen the other sister, but I guess. Yeah. yeah. Do we really want to do that? The next one is sexually desire him. And often, this is for the wives. This is not for girlfriends, so close your ears. <laughs> but for the wives, you need to desire him sexually and often. And like really want his body. Snatch his soul. Do every little dirty, freaky, nasty thing. The marriage bed is undefiled. So don't get prudish once you get married. This is the time to let out, let free right? Talk to your husband about your desires, your fantasies, all right? Be vulnerable and let him talk about his fantasies with you, right? You should kind of talk about it a little bit before marriage to kind of make sure he's not a weirdo. But so, but once you get married, because <laughs> sometimes you marry a guy, you find out a whole lot of skeletons in the closet. But once you start opening up to him and he knows he can open up to you sexually what can a whore do for your man that you can't do what can she possibly do that you can't do you rock the mic upside down how she, how, how can she outperform that you are really touchy feely in the shower how can she outperform that He's thinking about what you did for him when you both woke up the next morning. And he goes to work, smiling. Do, 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 he walking around the office. Hey, 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 hey. Everybody's like, gosh, it's Monday morning. Ugh. He's like, de, 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 de. right? Because you loved on him so good that morning before he went to work. That's what I'm talking about, right? Snatching his soul. Every dirty, nasty fantasy that you could possibly fulfill, let that be in your marriage. Give him an opportunity to express himself sexually with you. No other woman can get close to him. And I promise you, they, they will try. They will try. But because he's already opened up to you, he's able to do that. Now, there are some men that are sexually warped and, you know, they want to keep the wife pure and do dirty things outside the marriage. Those guys are weird. Um, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about healthy, uh, healthy masculine men who are, okay, healthy masculine men who are in love with their wives and want to keep a healthy bond between their wife. That's what I'm talking about. Here's a bonus for you. Men don't feel loved when they aren't respected. I know you've heard this before, but I'm going to really reiterate this as humans and as men, they need to be respected. This is huge because underlying uh, dislike of men is problematic because you can never truly respect any particular man. When I listen to some videos and I listen to some content, there's this underlying undertone of down with the patriarchy, down with men. I heard someone say men are violent or men are animals or something they said uh okay so i lost my twitch connection all right so um so they 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 said men are violent men are uh and and, and i was like what is that your experience is that what you teaching is that what you're teaching women to expect men to be but then in the next breath you're saying i can teach you how to attract a provider really Really, ladies, you really that's what we're doing in 2024. Come on, stop telling women that men are animals. If that's how you feel, get off the mic because that's not true. And that's literally, I, I, I feel the same about men who go around saying all women are whores. It's like, really, take the mic from you. I really want YouTube to just shut you down because that is problematic. Stop. You t you're literally teaching her, right. And I know where it's coming from. I know it's good. But that underlying dislike is problematic because 
you can never truly respect any particular man. You will always think um, his intentions or his motivations aren't pure when it comes to you. You'll never truly trust him. You'll never be able to be vulnerable. And because you can't be vulnerable, you can't open up. And because you can't open up, he can't fall in love with you. And he doesn't get to see the real you. You don't get to see real you. And you're basically just connecting on a very superficial level. And that's why you orbit away from each other. And you go, I don't really know why we broke up. We just stopped talking. And the reason is, is because neither one of you could be vulnerable. And it, it's, it has a lot to do with this real big chip on your shoulder about men. Go talk to somebody about it. You will always think that his intentions are not pure. Respect means you have regard for their feelings, their wishes, their rights, or their traditions. I see some women that want to date outside their race and everything is racist this and racist that. How could you possibly want to date this man and be a part of his culture if you think he's racist? That doesn't make sense. Hello, did you hear what you just said? I want to date this kind of man, but he belongs to this culture. And But you think that culture is racist. How could you possibly be with him? I see some people, they want to date black men and they don't like black culture. How is this possible? Your children will be a part of that. This is what I'm talking about. That is basic respect for people. You don't like Mexican food, but you want a Mexican man. Got it. But you don't respect this culture. They are, they are Catholic. They love God. They love church and family. And that's not you. Okay you don't respect that, that's a problem. They are very patriarchal in, in Latino community. That, you don't respect that. Okay, that's going to be a problem. He, he is a Christian man. You don't respect the church. You don't respect Christianity. You just want his money. Problem. That's a problem. The basic respect. He will never open up to you. It will always be a block over his heart. You don't respect his wishes, his rights as a man. You think, and I believe I'm of the Blanche Devereaux school of thought that, yeah, I should be treated better than a man. That doesn't mean that he needs to be abused. Men don't mind treating women better than them. They don't want to be abused, though. Right. So respect him, respect his feelings, a deep adoration. Respect is a deep adoration of a man as a result of uh, um, respecting his his abilities, his qualities and his achievements. This is why men who scream on the mic all day on social media are screaming about submission and are screaming about what women are doing because they don't get respect. That's what all that's about. And you know why? I guarantee you, if you look at their resume, you look at their past, they have no accomplishments, they have no abilities, and they have no achievements. Women know winners when we see them. And we don't always choose the winner, even if we see them, but we know them. I said what I said. Women know win women know winners. Now, some women who have some challenges may not always choose that winner because she may not be attracted to him, organically attracted to him. That's that's what it is. But she knows who he is. She knows who a winner is because she'll double back and get him. Women know winners. So when a man screams and hollers about who a woman is sleeping with, who she's with, been with, who she's talking to, how she lives her life, how many degrees she has, what kind of hair she has on her head, what she's doing, what he's telling you is, ah, pay attention to me. See, masters of the universe, women who, uh, men who produce blue chip uh, uh, hedge fund type of guys, business owners, men who are respected in the community, men who have something going on, men who have achievements, qualities about themselves and abilities about themselves don't need to be online screaming at women they don't know about what they are doing that they have no business commenting on. Only men who are underachievers scream at the top of their lungs Pay attention to me. Why did you choose him and not me? Arr! That's what little boys do. Women know winners. We do. We don't always choose winners, but we know winners. Ladies, choose winners. Stop choosing men that scream and holler at you, for God's sakes. They're screaming and hollering because they have not produced. They have not produced enough for any woman to say, you know what? I respect you. You're worth submitting to. You have a plan. Let me get on in line with your plan. 
He has to scream and holler about why he hasn't been chosen over another man. The reason why is because that man has abilities, qualities, achievements. He knows how to speak to women. He knows how to talk. He knows how to show up without talking down to a woman. He doesn't need to subjugate her. She automatically shows him respect because he respects himself and shows up. And here's the last bonus I want to give you, and then we're done. Genuine care. This one, I cannot reiterate this enough because you would think this is a given. A lot of women just don't do it. Genuine care for a man. Men will fight this at first. When you first show like genuine care for him, uh, if they haven't experienced it from a woman, I, they get it from their mom sometimes, but if they haven't experienced it from a romantic interest a, with someone like beautiful like you, at first, trust me, they love it and they need it. So sometimes they'll be kind of standoffish or kind of push it away a little bit at first because they're like, mm. but once you keep doing that, he gets addicted to how you care for him. Baby, are you okay? How you doing? What's going on? Anytime my husband comes out of you know finicky weather, I'm like, are you okay? I'm feeling his head. Are you okay? Is you, are you warm? What, what can I get you? you? Want something to drink? You want some drink? Let me take your shoes off. Will you? take your coat off. Let me help you get your coat off. Let me do that. I'm always extending that special care. You all can kind of um, um, uh, be creative with how you can show genuine care. Send them a text message. Are you okay? I heard Chicago is having a storm. Are you okay? Did you make it home? Okay. You have some soup. I'm going to send you a DoorDash with some soup. Something cute like that is not chasing a man. It's showing that you care. Now, is chasing when he has no interest in you whatsoever and you do this. But if there's genuine interest in that man, hey, baby, are you okay? You stuck in the house? Oh, you don't feel good? Okay, well, I'm going to place an order at CVS. You have CVS by your house? I'm going to send a DoorDash with the medicine. He's like, what? You ain't got to do that. I'm okay. Uh, I'm doing it. You're fine. Lay down. I'll talk to you later. And do that. And he's like, I'm grumble, grumble, grumble. But guess what? He's like, did she just do that for me? I, I'm, I'm here in this city. You're in their city. But I can't be there to take care of you. But hey, I'm thinking about you. And put a special note on the order. Hey, let him know that I'm thinking about him. And I sent him some cough syrup and some pills and uh, some aspirin or something. And and he'll go, grumble, grumble, grumble. I don't need it. And he's thinking in his heart, did she just do this for me? This is so cool. Most women are like, okay, so when are you going to be available to take me out again? <laughs> That's all they're thinking about, right? If someone passes away. To, uh, when are you going to be available for me again? Oh, that's horrible. Um, They only think about themselves. Someone who genuinely cares about their well-being without mothering them, okay? When you mother them, you're doing things for them and you're going overboard and you treat them like a child. But when you're nurturing them, you're showing genuine care and concern for a man, man, you're snatching his soul. Most women don't think about this at all. And this is how they lose the man because a woman, a nine or a 10 is so involved in herself. I've seen it a lot. A five or a six can come by Make a homemade pot of chicken soup. Put the thermometer in his mouth. Tuck him in. Kiss him on the forehead. Baby, I'm going to warm this soup up for you. I got to go. I got to go to work. I got to go to church. But I just warm this soup up and I'm just on my way. I just wanted to kiss you and say goodbye. He's like, man, that nine or 10 is like, well, let me know when you feel better. <laughs> A man who's truly looking for love is going to pay attention like, wow, she really cares about me. She's so attentive to my needs. You think men are so superficial that they're going to, a man that will overlook a woman that cares about his well-being is a fool. The Bible literally says that. We see that with Samson in the Bible. A man that overlooks a quality woman because she may not be a nine or a 10 is a fool. And he gets what he gets. But ladies, 
This is how you snatch a man's soul. You show him that you genuinely care about. I genuinely care about his well-being. I, I wanted to know how you felt. You were sniffling last week. Is everything okay? You're doing good. Uh, I haven't heard from you. What's going on? Everything okay? You said you had a bad day at work. Do you need a moment to get yourself together? I know we haven't spoken all day, but I know you had a tough day. Do you need a few minutes to get yourself together? You want to call me back? How many women do that? Most women are like, oh, you had a bad day. That's too bad. I need to get my time in with you. No, uh, uh, uh. no, 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 no. I know you had a bad day. I, I know it's rough for you. You want to give me, you want me to give you a few minutes. You want to call me back after you get yourself together, get home and relax. What man isn't going to appreciate that? A smart man would. Most men online are dumb. And so they won't get it. They're like, she has to be a nine or 10 and do that. And they'll be waiting forever. This is why these women who do what I said do, and I could go on, it's a few others that I could have included, but this is going on uh, an hour and a half, going on two hours. <laughs> so I just wanted to cut it short, but I just wanted to let you know that you do these things on this list, man, you're pulling his soul because most women don't even think this hard, right? Being considerate, uh-uh. Call to check on them after a hard day or a hard situation, especially if you're dating powerful men, clergy, um, entrepreneurs, masters of the universe type guys, high powered white collar guys, those blue chip hedge fund type of guys, all those guys, you, you definitely need to be calling. Are you sure you're okay? You need, a, you need a moment. You want to hit me back later? I'll be here. You know, I just want you to gather yourself together. And a lot of times I go, no, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Especially if they don't want to get want you to get off the phone. But a lot of times, it, thank you so much. You you understand me. I've I don't know how many times I've heard that. I think every guy I've dated said, You understand me. That means I understand man speak. I know when a man needs a moment. Now, when I'm mad, that's something different. I need Nicole to be tended to now. I'm upset. I need this right now. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> but when a man, when you notice a man needs something. Right. You go, you need a moment. You OK? You sure? I, I'll be right here. I'm not going anywhere. But you sound like you need a moment. You cool? Um, A lot of times the guys, guys will go, what? Who are you calling? No, I'm not calling anybody. I just wanted to give you a second. You want me to just sit on the phone while you get yourself together? I'll be here. Whatever. It's showing that you care about him. This is these are guys we have a rapport with, obviously. Uh, but this is obviously sh is showing that you care about him. It's going the extra mile. And a lot of women are so guarded because you're used to that transactional type of um this this transactional world where it's all about uh all about me. I need my needs, me, 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 me. I need my needs met. And that's fine. Just understand your relationships will be surface, right? You stand up for him, right? You stand up for him. You care about him. These are important. Any questions? I know I didn't give you a much a lot of time for questions. But with this late hour, I kind of feel like I'm talking forever. It seemed like when I start at one o'clock, it seems like I could talk forever. And it was like we started after four and it feels like I've been talking for three hours already. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. And for those of you who were interested in joining us, definitely join the newsletter, Mrs. Nicole Michelle dot com. We would love to have you on a newsletter um, because I'm always sending um, things out for you. And we have some interesting products coming out this year. I'm excited about them. I've been working on them for quite some time. I'm a perfectionist. I should have released them last year, but I'm a perfectionist and, um, I wanted it to be the best on the market because that's how I roll. And this year they're going to blow your mind. I think, I think, I think, I think also, um, the Alluring Wives course is coming out and I'm really thinking about having an erotic book club. And <laughs> I just, I, I, you know, I wonder if, if women, if the wives would be interested in that, the women that are married, that listen to me, would you be interested in, in an erotic book club? Yeah. An erotic book club. Would you be interested in that? And so that's something that I have thought about. And I'm even, I, I might even include single women. Like 
do what do you think about an erotic book club? Is that kind of cheesy or is that something women would be interested in? I'm thinking about that. But it's really the reason why I'm doing that is um <laughs> somebody liked it. <laughs> REM like the shout out to my my mods. The reason why I'm thinking about that is because I want women to start thinking about how to please their husbands. Um and for women that are preparing to be wives that marriage is not the time for you to be prudish. That's the time for you to let that inner freak out. Okay. Cause I know she's there. And sometimes when we read books, um, it allows us to, it's the escapism of the book that, and so I kind of want, maybe the books will awaken something in you. I don't know. Maybe I could get a sex therapist to come in and do like a, a boot camp, a sex boot camp. I don't know. I'm thinking, something like that. So if you know a good sex therapist, um, I've reached out to one and I didn't hear anything back from her. And that was a couple of years ago, but I want to do a sex, um, boot camp for women. Now this will be for wives. Okay. This will be for wives. We don't do this for boyfriends. This will be for wives. The The sex boot camp will be for wives. And, and I want to do it with, with a sex therapist to come in and awaken the inner freak so we can go be with our husbands and, you know, yeah, you know, have the bedroom on fire. Okay. <laughs> my brain is, is, is off work. It's after, it's after five. My brain is off work, <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? The erotic book club will be for everybody. I'm thinking, what do you all think about an erotic book club? I don't know if there is one, if there is one, send me a link. What do they do? What do they like? How does it run? I don't know. That just hit, hit me today. I'm like, how can I get wives to open up sexually and keep it spicy in their marriage? Like, do they need ideas? I'm not a sex expert. That's not my forte. I just know how Nicole gets down, but I want someone who's well-versed in this to come in and talk to wives because there's no way whores can outperform a wife. Absolutely not. We will keep our marriages and do our part, right? It's also on our husbands, but we want to do everything that we can do to keep it spicy because no more will you come out of the inner beauty movement and go into space and like, oh, yeah, wives don't give sex to their husbands. You can be like, oh no, speak for yourself, baby. We have so much sex, we can barely walk. That's what you need to be saying. That's what I want. I want wives to go out and be um, very, very uh, positive and very, very confident about their sexual relationship with their husbands. And those of you that are preparing, those of you that are my current clients, I hope to talk to you about that this week <laughs> uh, because I want your feedback. I want you ladies feedback. And then where do I get the books? Like it's been a while. I know Harlequin, that was years ago, but where do I get those uh, those books? Where can we get those books? Where can we start this club? Do, do I just need to do a newsletter? Uh, should it be on the app? Like, I don't know. It's just something that just hit me today. And I was like, Lord, how can I get these women to open up sexually with their husbands? Um, and I don't know, maybe, you know, um, what do you think? So the book club will be for everybody. The sex therapist boot camp that would be just for wives. I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, she's saying, <laughs> This is funny. You got to be Tanya Harding with these garments. Listen, um, 2024, gloves are off. Wives, we got to step our games up. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Oh, you want my man, huh? Oh, oh, no, 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 baby. No, no, no. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Homewreckers, no more. Whores, no more. In 2024. Oh, I should put that on a shirt. Whores, no more in 2024. Good Lord. Hey, Devin, text that to me so I don't forget. <laughs> Whores, no more in 2024. For all the while, I should do some shirts. I'm working on some merch. I just haven't got to listen. I have to send it off to my designer and see what's going on and get some merch. But hey, that's that's the slogan right there. Whores, no more in 2024. <laughs> listen, so um, any questions, any questions? I, I just, I like the erotic book club, but I didn't know if, uh, you ladies would be interested in it. Cause I don't want to start something with five people. I want people to be spread the word. I don't want it to be run by me. I want it to be run by us. And 
I don't want to recommend the book. I want other people to say, hey, I read this book. I think this is good. We should read this. We should read that. And there are scriptures in the Bible that tell us how to please our husbands. Are we ready for that conversation? Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking about. And so that's, uh, and somebody said Ann Rice. Um, okay. Thank you. She said she emailed it to me. Thanks, Devin. Yeah. I, 2024, let's get it. Let's get it. I also have a course coming out for those of you who want to marry well. I have some stuff coming up for you. This year is exciting. It's really, really exciting. And um, remember the business course I told you about? I am going to start working on it, but um, um, I don't think it's going to be a standalone course. I think it's going to be in my Patreon. So I think that's how I'm going to do it. And for those women who want to start a coaching business or you want to sell courses or you want to just figure out what your niche is, that's what my business is going to do. And I think I'm going to have a separate business course for women that want to start a coaching business because some of you have some really great advice and it, it, you have to understand the ins and outs of coaching and also, um, uh, building the audience and also making money, what to charge, how to, that sort of thing, that sort of thing I'm going to explore in 2024. That's not priority for me because I don't teach business. That's not my priority. So that'll be down the road, maybe late 2024, 25. But uh, there will be some things in Patreon that you can go and that can bless you and you can get started and you want help trying to figure out your niche and all of these things. I'm going to pass along as much information as I can. I don't have the largest platform in the world, but I do pretty well. And I think that um, a lot of women will benefit from what I have to say in terms of business. So we'll think about it. That's not going to be first priority. My other courses will because they're already uh, got to get that stuff out. And so that's what I'm thinking. Books by Zone. Okay. Somebody by Zane, Zane, Zane. Somebody said books by Zane. <clears throat> I've heard of her. Of course, I've heard of her. <laughs> um, so we'll be, you know, I have to put my heads together and think about if you're on the app, definitely get on the app because um, we're always, I'm always putting movies and books and TV shows, recommendations, travel spots, what to wear and what occasions. If you are in doubt of what to wear as a traditional woman, the app is for you. If you want to level up, you want your aspiring socialite preppy girl, understanding that world, I'm there. Um, the app is, is the hodgepodge of everything. Positive affirmations on a daily basis. Everything you can think of is in the app. Scriptures, you name it. You name it, it's in the app. I just uploaded a movie. You all were, un oh, you ladies. This last movie I just uploaded. <laughs> Woo, it's a good one. It's a good one. Trust me, you want to watch that movie. I just uploaded it the other day. And when I tell you, it's really, really good. So um, if you're on the app, that's the place to be. If you don't, you know, don't you want something um to help you level up or elevate your life on the go? Say you're bored at the the uh, wherever you are, you just want to log into something. You can log in, listen to Lady Like Lessons, uh, my famous lessons for about femininity, dating, courting, you name it, it's on there. I have sunsetted uh, a lot of my old videos on YouTube. They are sunsetted. I'm going to repurpose them for something else. So for those of you that were in my Patreon for that uh, years ago, those are gone. If you didn't hear them, I'm sorry. But you Patreon is going to get the new stuff that I'm putting in there. So, um, and then also the podcast that I promise you of Tony and I, that's in there already. We already have episodes downloaded, so you can go in there and I will let you know when the business section of my Patreon will be up and running because I want more women to start becoming financially, um, financially secure, start your own business and things like that. Can you see my questions? Am I asking the wrong place? Let me look up. Tamara, 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 Tamara. Oh, baby. I'm sorry. Let me see. Hold on. Okay. Being generous. Love that part. When is it too soon? He hasn't gifted me anything yet. I don't mind that. Just wondering if it'll look bad if I gift first. So 
and you're talking about dating. How long have you been seeing this guy? Like, is he your man? Like, what's what's going on with this? Gifting, like, where are you in the relationship? Like, is he a boyfriend? Are you dating? Because I want to give it in the proper, proper context. You see it, Tamara? She said, when is it too soon to gift him? I don't, I don't, I don't encourage women to gift, to focus on gift. I, I teach you to focus on being considerate. So sometimes being considerate will look like buying him a sandwich or, you know, something like that. You're just dating. Yeah, I wouldn't focus on gifting, okay? I would focus on being considerate, okay? Focus on the intangibles of what I told you today. Did I did I tell any of you what to buy? No, I said focus on being considerate. Sometimes being considerate may be buying him some chicken noodle soup, buying him a sandwich, um, a piece of gum, <laughs> you know, a book. Um, he's having an event at his house. Take a book or a bottle, cheap bottle of wine, something like that. Um, um, it's his birthday and you're just dating, give him a card, give him a card and a gift certificate to like Barnes and Nobles or something like that. Something simple. Don't worry about gifts. Okay. Worry about showing up for the intangibles. It's the intangibles that he can't buy. See your gifts can be replaced, but a woman that gives intangibles cannot be replaced because what's the, what's the price? How much does it cost for you? to make him a a, a, a a pot of chicken noodle soup from scratch, take it to his house, warm it up and give it to him. How, what's the dollar amount of that? What's the value of that? Right. Um, what's the value of calling him and saying, Hey, I was just thinking about you or, you know, texting him. Hey, I was just thinking about you. Are you okay? You know, that, that is the intangibles. That's how you keep a man's attention without having sex with him. Like the good men, not the hornballs. The good men is, are you putting forth those? These are the things that show that you would be a good wife because you're being considerate. Because believe it or not, wives, we have to be super considerate. <laughs> Sometimes more than our share of considerates, consideration. Um, and, 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 and if you understand that as a single woman, that is not always about you and what he can do for you. And take the tit for tat out of it. Not saying that you do, but take the tit for tat out of it. Sometimes in relationships, you're going to give and you may not give back. It You may not get it back. It, it, uh, let me put it to you like this. When, sometimes in relationships, give and don't expect anything back because of the scenario. So like if he's sick and you call and say, Hey, I'm going to make you a pot of chicken noodle soup from scratch, like using my grandmother's recipe. Don't expect for him to, okay, I'm going to take you to the Amalfi coast because you made me a pot of chicken soup or uh, buy you that airman's bag because you made me this pot of chicken soup. Just do it because it's a nice thing to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? That goes so further because a lot of times when people do things with the expectation that you're going to get something back, it makes people feel transactional. It makes people feel icky. It's the same feeling. Let me give you this illustration. It's the same feeling as a hooker gets when she's with a guy. Um, maybe, no, I'll take it back. She's not a hooker. She's just a regular woman. And a man takes her, takes her out for steak. And because he took her out, he expects to sleep with her. Right. That icky feeling that you get away. You just took me. <laughs> you just took me to Fleming's. Are you serious? You just took me to Sparks. Right. And and now you want you just took me to Delmonico's and you, now you want to sleep with me. That icky feeling. That's the same icky feeling he gets when we do things for him, expecting him to do something for us in return. And believe me, they can tell they can tell you expect something in return. They can tell. OK, so ladies, when you're with men, sometimes it's the same energy like when you're attracted to a guy and you go above and beyond for him because you're attracted to him. That same energy, you don't ask any questions, you just do it because you're attracted to him. I've been there, done that. Right. We've all been there, done that. Right. 
We do it because we're in love. We love this man. And has he truly earned it? Sometimes no. And that same energy needs to apply to every man. That's how you snatch your soul. Most women won't get that. They won't get that till they're like 55, 60 years old. And then they'll try to be extra accommodating. And then that's when men go, yeah, I know what time is on. You need somebody to save you. And that's when you go prove it yourself above and beyond. And that's when you see all these older women jumping through hoops to get a man. That's why. Because they finally figured it out and the men don't trust her. Um, Tamara says, new boyfriend, he needs a planner. And we talked about journaling together. Okay, I'll focus on um, untangibles. Yeah, he needs a planner. So that's a good one. He needs a planner. And what you could do is go, hey, I saw some planners online. I think would be great. Or you can send him the link to the planners. He's not expecting you to buy it. Okay. Ladies, men are not expecting you to buy them things. Send him only mama's boys and 50-50 want to be pimps want you to buy stuff for them. They they believe that they're the prize. And I said what I said. A uh, traditional man does not expect you to buy things for him. Just send him the link. Hey, baby, I was scouring social media. I remember what you said about you needed a planner or I remember our conversation. I thought this would be great for you. I thought about you when I saw it. Here's the link. Boom. It served its purpose. You're showing that you're showing concern. You're showing that you're thinking about him and you're listening. Boom. And you didn't spend a dime. Now the 50-50 guy, what's wrong with her spending some money on a man? Goodbye. We're not talking to you. <laughs> you're looking for women to spend money on you, bruh. This isn't the, the channel for you. Okay. <laughs> this isn't the channel for you. A lot of men have that pimp spirit in them. What can I get out of a woman? How can I exploit a woman? Yeah, they have the pimp spirit. I said what I said. They have the pimp spirit. And so it's all about what can I get from a woman? I, re I rebuke and bind that spirit and cast that all the way out. That pimp spirit? No, we don't do that. No, ma'am. No, sir. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. We don't do that. We don't do that, ma'am, sir. Uh, We don't do that. <laughs> a man is a man and a woman is a woman. That's what that is. So, um, and so if you're looking for women to spend money on you, that's weird. That's weird. That's weird. Why do you want women to spend money on you? That's weird. Are you a child? Did you have your dad in your life? Like, why do you want women to spend money on you? That's weird. Um, she should, she can show consideration with, for you without spending a lot of money. That's crazy. But any other questions, ladies? Um, think about how to show consideration without spending money. And if he comes off like he's he's mad that you didn't spend money on him, um, that's your 50-50 guy. That's your 50-50 pimp. Let him go. Um, Because that's not going to get any better. Yeah. A lot of been on, on social media had this, this pimp spirit, this pimp mentality. What can I get out of a woman? She has degrees. She needs to keep working. What does a degree have to do with me having a baby and wanting to breastfeed my own baby and be at home and not send my own baby to daycare? What does that have to do with that? What does A have to do with B? Just say you just don't want to be a husband. Just say you want to be a bum. You just want to go from female to female. Just say that. Just say that. Shout out to Freddie Roosevelt from Clubhouse. Just say that. You know, just say it. Don't don't beat around the bush. Just come right out and say it. What, what does me going to college have to do with me having your child and I want to be at home with our child instead of taking it to a daycare in among strangers, have all of these, these, you know, random, uh, what you call that? Not diseases, but uh, infections and whatnot. Uh, why? Why can't I take care of our, our child that we made? Why do I need to go put it off on some other person? Right? No shade to women that want to work. If you want to work, hey, I, I'm, I'm by you. If it's working, hey, I'm not knocking that. I'm not against you. I'm for you if it's working for you. But for the women that want to say... Just ask a man, um, what does my degree have to do? What does my job have to do with me wanting to be at home with our children? 
Um, you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. What does a man's who's intentional look like? Uh, he's consistent. He tells you what he's going to do. He does it. He stands by what he does. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If he's traditional, he's traditional. There is no arguing about who does what. And it, if he's whatever man he says he is, that's what he is. There's no doubt. Right. That's how you know a man's in, uh, intentional. When he's not intentional, you have a bunch of questions. Remember, ladies, when a man um, is into you, you won't have any questions. When a man is not into you, you'll have 20 million questions. What, what is he going to do? What does he think? Uh, where's this going? You'll know when a man is into you. You'll know because... You won't have any questions. You know, <clears throat> when you have a bunch of questions, then you know something something's not right, and then you know something's got something's off track. Does that make sense? Um, but that's that's loving a man. That is snatching a man's soul. Can you snatch a man's soul? Is the question. I believe you can, ladies. I believe you can, and that is. Going outside of yourself and being considerate and thinking about other people other than yourself is really being selfless. Can you be selfless? Can you love a man and be selfless? Can you do that? I believe you can. I believe that putting your hand, your head in a man's chest and crying and having him console you and say, I love you. I'm here for you. Is that unconditional love that every woman searches and seeks for? And I believe you can't have that until you're vulnerable, until you're able to trust him and be vulnerable with him. And you're unable to do that if you're riddled with pain and destruction and listening to angry men, angry women on social media, women that go in on church people, women that go in on feminine women, women that go in on women that want to be housewives, women that go in. It's all about uh, what I can get is never about understanding men. It's always about what I can extract from him. Stay away from women like that. That's a very toxic message. Um, all of their messages is about what you can get from a man, how I can be hypergamous, how I can marry up, how I can get a provider, how I can stay away from those spaces. Man, I promise you, if it was, if this was working, more women would be married. <laughs> because men will be like, whoa, this is working. Where are they getting all this advice from? I can tell you right now, men are only getting more rebellious. And that's because that information isn't working. And they will convince you, oh, you know, know your truth, live your truth. Don't listen to that. Do what you want. Okay, you can do what you want. But those women never tell you as you age, there's no retirement for hoes. There's no retirement for women that do all this. What's your retirement? Those women will be working 10 years from now. There is no man that's going to come save them from this life. They're only as good as their last trick. They're only as good as their last whatever. The, <clears throat> You're only as good as the last feeling you gave a man. If that was only sex and seduction, then it's not going to go beneath the surface. And in order for you to snatch a man's soul and love him deep, deeply, you have to come out of that, right? You got to go beneath the surface. Men are craving love. Men who get plenty of sex have sex. Your sex and seduction tricks and crystals and, and, and casting spells and all that foolishness, all of that, he's laughing. He's like, yeah, whatever. I'm still going to bend you over and not call you back. He's like, you don't even have to do all that. He really wants to get to know you. He wants you to try to get to know him for a change. He's craving love. He's craving a woman that can think about somebody else besides herself. You don't need a spell. You don't need uh, crystals. Uh, you don't need sage and all that other foolishness to get a man. I laugh. Every time I hear this, stuff, I laugh. I'm like, you did all that to get a man? That's the easiest thing to get on this planet is a man. You can literally walk out the door and get a man. 
<laughs> oh, we did that to get a rich man. You can, you don't need that for a rich man. You just need to go to work and smile. There's rich men around you. Hello. Most of you, your boss is rich. The people in your offices are rich. What are we doing? What are we talking about here? Most, if you go to the places I tell you to go, wealthy men are everywhere. What are we talking about? You don't need witchcraft and all that other foolishness to get a man. Girl, if you're feminine, <laughs> you don't need to be all seductress. You don't need to dress extra sexy. You don't need to be all ostentatious. You don't need to show your nip nips. You don't need to wear ex everything extra tight. You just need to be you, girl. A man is going to look, even if you had a potato sack on, he's going to look. <laughs> <laughs> all this stuff people do. people are online half naked and still don't have a man how is this how sway girl what <laughs> she said my boss is rich but he's married though yeah girl but if you get in his social circle and go to the events there are single men at the events married people know people they have a network they have a social network. And when you become outgoing and you sh uh, sh show yourself to be outgoing and a person that's enjoyable and you have great conversation, you start to get invitations. And at that invitation, people have spoken about you. Hey, is this nice young lady that works in my office? Hey, elegant, elegant, come over here. I wanted to introduce you to Mr. Boot and Shoe. Mr. Boot and Shoe runs the company downtown I was telling you about. And boom, boom, boom. There you go. You met him. Just like that. Just like that. There's no spells. There's no crystals. <laughs> There's no manifestation. It's nothing like that. It's just you being you. Meeting men is so easy, y'all. Come on, 2024, I'm making fun of all that stuff. It is not that hard. <laughs> snap, your, snap your fingers and click your heels three times and turn around three times and cast. Girl, no, just put on a nice dress and some heels and smile. That's how you get a man. Boom. That wasn't even that difficult, was it? Come on, y'all. <laughs> That's it. That's why you get on the app. And I've put in events in pretty much every major city. I need to go back in and update it because of the new year. And a lot of websites are updating. Um, gala season is coming. And so ladies that are single and you like to dress up, go to galas and you want to get in the vicinity of blue chip, hedge fund, masters of the universe, gala season is your time. Stop being cheap. Go get you some nice dresses and go get you a black car and go. Okay. Go. Right. The museum is cool. Eating dinner is cool. But you need to get out and about. Go on some of these um, singles trips like uh, where they go to the safari and they go to these uh, three city trips uh, like Rome and Paris and what's the other city? It'll be Rome, Paris, London. It's like three cities. Uh, take those tours. Sometimes people be on that. Uh, they get lo love connections on stuff like that. Go skiing fly fishing, antique cars, Milan. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's Milan. I think it's it's Rome, Paris, and it's an, I want to say London, but I don't think it might be. It might be Milan. St. Moritz, go to those places. And I'm telling you, Vegas, New York, Atlanta, Houston. Travel. That's what I want you to It might be London. Yeah, I think it's London. It's London, Paris, and Rome. And those trips, just take a month and just go. Just go. Experience life. Experience what you'll find out is people all over the world are attracted to you. And what you'll find out is uh, it will bring, it will encourage you to bring out your personality because uh, sometimes it's a language barrier. And some sometimes it will encourage you to try new foods try different um, cultures, understand, immerse yourself in the culture. Go to South America and participate in a dig. That I've always wanted to do that now that I'm a little bit older. I don't think I'm going to do that, but my mom did that. She did that when she was in college. I was looking through my mom's older photos uh, a few years back 
and she um was at the base of this mountain and she was digging artifact digging i'm like that's something i overlooked i didn't even ask my mother about that when she was alive like my mother was digging artifacts like who does i'm like i, I haven't lived i haven't even done as much as my mother has done like she's digging artifacts what in the world so like do that ladies do that travel do some things think outside of the box y'all the the turn up think outside of the box right think outside of the box could you add more events for charleston i certainly will absolutely let me write that down charleston i love charleston by the way i love charleston it probably a little bit more than i love savannah georgia Savannah and Charleston are my two favorite cities. Charleston, I love Charleston. When I go to Charleston, I stay in the uh, the uh, French quarters. Charleston. Thank you so much. I'll do that. Um, And let's see. Yes, my mom lived. She definitely lived. She definitely lived. <laughs> she was the only brown girl on a bus full of Caucasians. And she was out there digging. I said, go on mama. And it just brought tears to my eyes. I just looking at my mom doing that. And I have to find those photos of her. I love Savannah. Savannah, Georgia is just, I love that place. You talk about a place where you can get lost for a few days. I love Savannah, Georgia and Charleston is just, I just love Charleston. So ladies, thank you so much. This has been about a two hour show. Thank you so much for um, being patient with me and sitting through this. I really, really appreciate you ladies. Questions. And remember loving a man is not difficult. It's just coming out of yourself and being the best that you can be and showing up and giving good love. You're not responsible. Oh, you want, you want some stuff for Detroit? No problem. Oh, you said Detroit. Okay. I'll try to look up some stuff for Detroit. Um, but gala season is coming up. And so, um, let's just find some stuff, uh, that go be a part of. That's what I want you ladies to be involved in. Those are the best men from the families, ladies, not these, these, uh, jokers online making up that they're doing amongst themselves. No, that's not the movers and shakers. The movers and shakers already have their own little social circles and societies that's what i'm talking about not this crap online it's a bunk it's a joke um <laughs> it literally is a joke and you know because they're throwing it if it's a reputable organization that's what i recommend if it's somebody online throwing something um especially yeah no it's it's trash i can tell you it's trash so it's not something that women should go to anyway. This is what I'm telling you. South Florida, I have some stuff in there for South Florida, but I know West Palm, uh, not West Palm. I know there are some things for Orlando and Miami. I just need to go in there and, and some fine. So explore in 2024. That's the deal. Ladies, let's get it. Vancouver. Let's let's look at Canada. Let's let's talk about Canada. Vancouver, Montreal, Quebec. And what's the other one? Toronto. And it's another one. Is it Alberta? Let's look at Canada. Ladies, I want to see some of you go to Canada for a change. Go to Canada. See what's up there. Um, What about fiancés who would want to learn? What about fiancés who would want to learn before marriage? I'm not quite understanding your question. Oh, do you have your fiancé and she wants to learn about marriage? Um, hit go to Mrs. Nicole Michelle.com or you can go to the inner beauty movement.org and sign up for uh some courses. The future wives club is wife prep. Uh, the good girl method, I have not put it back on the market, but it, it did very, very well in its launch. And so I'm so excited about the women that signed up for it. Um, so because it did well, I will re relaunch and make that a self study course. Uh, the good girl method, because that is actually uh, a prerequisite. It's not a prerequisite, but it should go before the marriage prep course because it prepares you for dating and all the nuances of dating. Any events for Boston? I think I have a couple of events for Boston on the app. 
So just go in there and look, but I will write down Boston just to make sure. But I do believe Boston is a really good place for events, if you didn't know. Very good place. Vancouver is beautiful. Vancouver, uh, Quebec, Alberta, this is Toronto, Montreal. Go to Canada, y'all. Take some pictures up there. I have a couple of clients from Canada. So go up there, try Canada out, see what's up. Think outside of the box, y'all, in 2024. Have some fun, right? Not just museums and restaurants. That's good. But try some new things. Think outside the box. All right, ladies? Remember, I love you and Jesus Christ loves you. And until the next time, keep the faith, everybody. Peace out.